frustrated, confused, angry. Does this describe your journey trying to learn new computer programs like Adobe Photoshop, Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, and Inkscape? If so, you are not alone. Most adults hate learning new things, especially computer programs. However, If you want to achieve awesome print-on-demand sales or digital design sales, you most likely have to master at least one graphics design program. So in this video, I cover how to have a successful learning mindset that will allow you to unlock your potential and learn any computer program. This is not a hack or a scheme. This is the proper management of your mind so you can learn and have fun. Let's go. Okay, so am I going to be preaching a bunch of woo-woo here or am I going to be talking about actual mind science? Well, there's a model that I often use in my life that helps me quite, quite a bit. And it really starts off with you've got a set of circumstances. So i.e. we don't know how to use a certain computer program. And we're trying to get to a set of results. And that set of results would be that we want to master a computer program. So what is separating us between the circumstances and the results. There's actually three things that separate us. And the first one is the thoughts that we have about any situation that we're in. Those thoughts create feelings. And it's the feelings, us being angry, confused, excited, happy, having fun, that drives our actions. So really, it's the actions that we need to get in there and change i.e. spending an hour or two a night working on a computer program. And if that fills you with dread, sitting down for two hours, grinding through Affinity Photo, for example, it might be because the thoughts we're having about that particular program or that particular activity. So what we want to do is visit the thoughts that we have that drive our feelings, and that will empower us to take more actions. So I've actually got five tips here, two concepts and three tips, I guess, but five big picture value here that I'm going to be giving you guys. And the first one is asking yourself, which learning style are you? I think this is an important question to ask. And if you're not sure what the answer is, that might be one of the reasons that we get frustrated when we're trying to learn a new computer program. So for example, there's actually three different types of learning. There's visual learning, which is watching a video, watching somebody do the actual task in Photoshop or Affinity Photo. There's also auditory learning or audio learning, and that's listening to the instructions. And then there's the third type, which is doing the actual task, the kinetic learning. So some people just learn by doing. Some people want to watch. Some people want to listen. Figure out which learning style you are and then gravitate towards that type of teaching. Concept number two is to remove your ego from this. Imagine a little kid, maybe he's five years old, six years old. Most five-year-olds are like really terrible at doing everything because they've only been on this earth for five years. So tying their shoes, man, they're getting a gold medal because they can't really do anything else. They can't drive a car. They can't vote. They can't operate heavy machinery. But imagine now as an adult, you have expertise in something by the time you reach adulthood. You might be an accountant. You might be a plumber, a welder. You might be really good at knitting, whatever it is. If you're an expert, you take pride in that expertise. Moving from expert to novice can be a real blow to someone's ego. So we need to embrace the idea that we're not going to be very good at something. It's not necessarily bad that we don't know how to do something. It just simply is. Another way to look at it is embracing failure. When I say the word fail, most of us think of that as a negative term. But it doesn't have to be a negative term. You can just simply say, look, I'm going to fail 39 times. And on the 40th try, I'll figure it out. And as a result, I win. So it's only a failure if you give up. It's not a failure if you just don't do it right the first time, the second time, the 10th time. It doesn't really matter. Another way to take a look at this concept is adjusting your expectations. 
By the way, I'm talking about the same thing here every single time. Removing your ego, embracing failure, and adjusting your expectation. It's all the same thing. Adjusting your expectation when you go into a brand new high-end computer program with thousands of features designed by a team of professional engineers and computer scientists, it would make sense that it's going to take a while for us to figure out how this thing works. So I've got three methods that you can use to help you learn computer software better. So method number one is to play around in the computer system for about an hour at a time. It could be a little bit more, it could be a little bit less, but you give yourself a finite period of time to simply just goof around with the computer program. So if you've just purchased Affinity Photo, for example, pick one or two buttons, click them, and just see what they do. There's no expectations that you're making anything. There's no expectation you have to have something tangible at the end of the hour. You're just goofing around in the playground for an hour and you just want to see what happens. That goes back to adjusting your expectations. Method number two is to recreate an existing project. So what you would do is you would watch a YouTube video on how to do a certain task and then you would simply just take an hour or so and you would just try to recreate that one tiny task. Maybe it takes you 10 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe it takes you a whole hour. But you need to piecemeal down the actual guts of the project. So when you look at a really high-end piece of art, there could be 20 different methods being used in order to make that artwork shine. So you would need to know 20 different skills. Well, that's daunting. That's intimidating. That's, that can be frustrating. Instead, pick one of those 20 skills and just do that one thing five or 10 times and then you can master that one individual granular skill. Method number three is to break it on purpose. And what I mean by that is open up Photoshop, Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, whatever it may be. Pick a task, pick a, a tool inside of those programs and just See how weird you can make something. So for example, Affinity Photo has a liquify feature. Well, if you really want to see how it works, push the boundaries of it. See how liquid you can make something. This will often give you a new insight into the usability of that feature. So I hope you found this helpful. This is a little bit of pretty woo-woo, but I think our mind is our most important asset. And if we invest in our mind and we invest in our skill set, it will reward you over time with wealth and with happiness. Feel free to leave a comment down below if you have another tip on how you can learn better. I'd love to hear your experiences, and I know other YouTube viewers would as well. Thank you so much for watching. And here's another video on how you can supercharge your computer skills. Thanks for watching. Take care.